to be honest, I already sprayed two coats of the Flex Seal onto the roof, but I just didn't film it. So I sprayed a third coat, which there wasn't that much left in the can just for you guys to see. But yeah, I used, if you saw my last video, you saw the you saw the leak that sprung went out when we were in the middle of a trip up in Washington. So I got some rubber flex seal, the spray on kind. The paint on kind would probably be a little bit better, but this is just a temporary fix. I do have, I do have this Dicor self-leveling lap sealant. And I am gonna be using that because that's like the stuff that you wanna use for something like this. But in order to apply this, you need like sunny, warmer weather, which there is definitely a scarcity of that here in the Pacific Northwest. So until I'm able to find some time to go out to like the desert or something to apply that, uh, the flex seal is hopefully gonna work. For the meantime, it has rained since I applied the first two coats and knock on wood, it doesn't seem like anything has leaked. So only time will tell. Now I'm headed to the Mount Hood area and if you're not familiar with Mount Hood it's actually the tallest peak here in Oregon it sits at about 1100 a little over 1100 feet elevation which isn't all too high in the grand scheme of it but nonetheless it's the highest peak here in Oregon um, it's a strato volcano which is pretty cool here in the Pacific Northwest there's a lot of volcanoes a lot of the peaks are volcanoes and this specific volcano hasn't erupted it's been dormant since like the eight the 1900s i believe sometime in 18 like in the 1860s was the last time that it erupted so it's been dormant this whole time they say that it could potentially still be active but it's been dormant for hundreds of years so who knows if it's ever actually gonna erupt again so i'm headed up there to go camp for the night um there's a couple of really cool lakes in the area so i might try to do some fishing other than that there's not much of a plan i just want to get out and enjoy the beauty up here of the pacific northwest so sit back grab a beer grab a coffee enjoy the video That's a bummer. So that gate was blocking the road that goes down to the lake that I was trying to get to. I was gonna camp around that area. I'm gonna have to reevaluate and find another camping spot. I wanna go down to the lake still. It is like a two mile walk from this parking lot down to the lake and I was gonna fish, but seeing as it's already past one and it's a two mile hike down, two mile hike back up, that's four miles and it gets dark here around 4.30. So I'm probably not gonna have time to fish because I wanna get back to the truck in time to uh, go find a spot while there's still light out so i guess no fishing today unfortunately but let's just get to walking because this is a pretty beautiful lake that i want to show you guys So I guess the road was literally just closed yesterday, December 1st, today is the second, so we just missed it. But that's okay, it's okay to get outside and get moving every now and then. I wasn't really planning on hiking today, but then again, this isn't exactly a hike, I'm basically just walking along the road to get to the lake. But either way, feels good to be outside.
during the, the heart of the winter, this whole area gets turned into a snow park. So basically this, this entire road and the trees and the dirt, everything is covered in snow. And they open this up to uh, cross country skiing, snowshoeing, that kind of thing. So that's really fun. And that's something to look forward to this winter. A little patch of snow. I guess that means we're officially truck camping in the snow. Just kidding. I'm not gonna cheat you guys like that. <laughs> Usually right up over there, you get this beautiful view of Mount Hood. Unfortunately, right now it's behind the clouds, so you can't see it. It's definitely one of the best, if not the best views of Mount Hood that you could get, in my opinion. Pretty sweet lake though, right? Man, I wish I could fish right now because I would have the entire lake all to myself. And apparently this is like a really good spot to fish. I've never fished here, but maybe in the very soon future, I'll come back, get here much earlier in the day so I could hike down with my fishing gear and get some fishing in because I have a good feeling about this lake. I have a really, really good feeling. So maybe a catch and cook in the future filmed at this lake. We'll see. like something's wrong with my drone and I can't fly it. It's always, always something, always. Can never, can never go smoothly, can it? Sorry guys, that means no cool drone footage of the lake. Well, <clears throat> I've been here for all of 20 minutes, but I think I should start heading back now because it is, it's getting kind of late and I wanna have some daylight to find another camping spot. Like I mentioned, it gets dark at like 4.30, maybe even a little earlier. So I gotta get a move on, but this was nice. Well, that turned out to be a pretty good little workout. Let's go find a spot to camp now.
is freaking cool. <laughs> I thought this little guy here was a mushroom from far away, but it's actually just a piece of snow. Really been such a love-hate relationship with the Slumber Queen because all of the issues that I've had to deal with, the leaking, um, the battery, like it's just one thing after another and that's just like one of the sacrifices of owning an old vintage truck camper. There's always going to be things constantly going wrong and it's super annoying and frustrating and I get fed up with it all the time. But then I go out to places like this that are just absolutely like stunning and it all, all those problems kind of just like dissolve into the background. Sure, I could access places like this without the camper, but it's really cool having the little tiny home. Uh, so when you're in places like this, you have like a little dwelling to reside in, which I think is really nice. Today I'm going to be making a dish called Pad Si Iu. You might have heard of it. If not, it's a very well-known and famous Thai noodle dish. In fact, here in America, it's probably the most popular and well-known Thai dish other than Pad Thai. Pad Thai is more on the sweet side, whereas Pad Si Iu is just going to be on the savory side. It's really, really delicious. In Thailand, it's actually served as a street food. Uh, here in America, it's kind of like a staple at most Thai restaurants. Really, really good. So let's just go ahead and get started. So according to the, to the package, you're actually supposed to just soak these noodles for an hour and then they'll be ready to, uh, to cook or to cook with, I should say, but I didn't know to do that. So we're just going to boil them. Since I'm cooking these wrong, I don't know if they're gonna stick together while while I stir fry them. Hopefully not. That's always the problem with rice noodles, right? Getting them to not stick to each other as they cook. First, we're gonna get the garlic in there. Chicken. Oh, they're kind of sticky. Oh, 
bother. The noodles are kind of sticking to each other. That was, uh, that was actually pretty tough to make this dish in the camper while also filming. There's just a lot of things going on at once, and I feel like my timing was a little bit off, which is why a lot of the noodles ended up sticking to each other. But regardless, it looks pretty good, so let's just give it a shot. You know, guys, I can't even lie to you. This is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing like the restaurants. <laughs> It's tasty, it's tasty, but it's not, it's not like the restaurants. I think the the noodles that I used, they uh, they definitely weren't cooked properly. I think maybe if I would have prepared them the, that the, pack, the way that the package said, like soaking them in water instead of boiling them, they have a very rubbery consistency. And I think that's just throwing off the whole dish. Flavor wise, I, am I, it's, pretty, it's pretty similar to Pod CU at a restaurant, flavor wise, the sauce and whatnot but the, the rubbery noodles are just kind of throwing me off. Oh, I almost forgot. No beer today. I'm drinking coconut water, the healthier alternative. That was really disappointing. The chicken and the gailon and the egg, that was all really good, but the noodles were, the noodles were really, really bad. Well, I'm gonna hit the hay. Good night. gorgeous out right now. I was expecting to, to wake up to cloudy, rainy conditions, but this is the bluest I've seen the skies in like a long time. <laughs> Shout out to Bean and Bean Coffee, by the way. This video is not sponsored. They're just awesome people and they make great coffee. So make sure to check them out. Beanandbean.com. Good coffee.
Alright guys, and that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys, like always, for watching. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. You guys go out there and you guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life, beat the status quo, y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.